Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon on this bright, sunny day. Mr. Speaker, Lieutenant Governor Sears, Attorney General Meares, Madam President, members of the General Assembly, justices of the Supreme Court, my fellow Virginians. Today we gather not as individuals, Republicans or Democrats, but today we gather as Virginians. And for the 73rd time in the history of Virginia, the home of American democracy, we're participating in the peaceful and orderly transfer of leadership. The will of the people grants a license to serve a temporary license extended with trust, with hope, and with expectations to deliver on promises made. And therefore, as I reflect on my Virginia home and my love for this great nation and its founding principles, I am so humbled to be sworn in today as the 74th Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. The solemn oath sworn today in the name of the Almighty Father is done so with the love of my life by my side, your new First Lady, Suzanne Yunkin. joy and pride that we both feel for our lovely and wonderful children, Grant, Anna, John, and Thomas. I'm so grateful for all of your love and support. And to my sister Dottie, I can feel mom and dad smiling upon us today. Suzanne and I want to thank Governor Ralph Northam and First Lady Pam Northam for being so gracious and supportive during this transition. Their love for Virginia shines through, and their many, many years of dedication simply suggest basic words, we love Virginia. On behalf of the Commonwealth, I want to thank you for your service. In this last election, we heard from more voters than ever before. 25% more, nearly 3.3 million Virginians. 3.3 million Virginians who sent us here on a mission to restore trust in government and to restore power to the people. We stand here today as the messengers of that movement, entrusted to protect liberty, create opportunity, and build unity for the hard work ahead. 
This celebration is about that movement, not the candidates or elected office holders. It's not about me, but rather it's about us. And this movement continues to be fueled by the hopes and dreams and, yes, the tenacity and grit of Virginians, of parents, students, teachers, of entrepreneurs and small business owners, of law enforcement and all first responder heroes. of hard-working Virginians coming home from the midnight to 8 a.m. shift, of active-duty military veterans and their families, of farmers, factory workers, and healthcare heroes. Today, we stand together on behalf of Virginians who've never lost faith, even when they've suffered loss, of Virginians who have not stopped dreaming of a better life, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. My fellow Virginians, the spirit of Virginia is alive and well. And together, we will strengthen it. Together, we will renew the promise of Virginia. So it will be the best place to live and work and raise a family. No matter who you voted for, I pledge to be your advocate, your voice, your governor. We stand here on January 15, 2022, filled with hope and optimism for the years ahead. This hope and optimism springs from a shared vision of the future and also from knowing what we've been through. We are all acutely aware of the struggles Virginians have endured over the last two years, struggles that we continue to face. Not a single one of us has escaped the tragic consequences of COVID-19. Today, we lift up our prayers for the more than 15,000 Virginians whose lives have been lost. We pray for their families. And we pray for those who have survived but who've lost jobs, lost an income, or a business, or even lost hope. We know the impact borne by children who fell behind because their classrooms were locked down too long, and the strain placed on parents, especially Virginians' moms, who had to juggle with their homes becoming job sites and virtual classrooms overnight. And this moment of hardship has been compounded by economic factors, inflation, supply chain failures, rising grocery, gas, and utility bills as well as higher taxes and stagnant growth. We've all witnessed a rise in divisiveness in the public square and distrust of public figures. Our politics have become too toxic. Sound bites have replaced solutions. They've taken precedence over good faith problem solving. Yet as we gather here today, I join you with an unbridled sense of optimism because I know and I trust Virginians. We're home to a resilient and courageous people, heroes who've inspired us, doctors and nurses who've worked double shifts to save lives, grocers, truckers, postal workers who've worked overtime to stock shelves and make deliveries, and neighbors who have taken care of the frail and elderly in our communities. Despite the continuing challenges posed by COVID-19, I see a path forward, not to some pessimistic new normal, but to a new and better day. Our common path forward is with the miracle of modern medicine. It's given us vaccines, new therapeutics, and medical treatments. And our common path forward is also forged with a deep and, and abiding respect for individual freedom. Yeah. 
My fellow Virginians, our common path forward protects both lives and livelihoods across this great commonwealth. My fellow Virginians, I come to this moment and to this office knowing that we must bind the wounds of division, restore trust, find common cause for the common good, and strengthen the spirit of Virginia. And to be clear, this spirit of Virginia is not a spirit that is rested in government telling us what is best for us, but rather reflecting the will of the people, defending and protecting, <laughs> defending and protecting the rights guaranteed by our Constitution, and a government and elected leaders going to work every day for we the people. Make no mistake, Virginians remain resilient with that tenacity and grit and undeterred hope and optimism to press through these challenges. We must venture forward because a new and better day is ahead of us. After all, we are Virginians whose leaders gave birth to this most exceptional nation the world has ever known. Yes, a country with great chapters of injustice, but also a country birthed on the fundamental notion of freedom, that we're all endowed by a creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A nation whose ideas and ideals have been replicated and memorialized around the globe for more than 250 years. And Virginians have led boldly. They've led boldly from our founding, Washington, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. And our very first governor, Patrick Henry, who insisted on adding the Bill of Rights to the Constitution to protect our individual liberties. This is our lineage. And following generations carried that mantle, leading and serving as Virginians are called to do. Barrier breakers like Maggie Walker and Governor Doug Wilder, who's here with us today. <laughs> leading the way for this historic inauguration of our new Lieutenant Governor, Winsome Earl Sears. And our new Attorney General, Jason Miares. The people of Virginia just elected the most diverse leadership in Commonwealth history. Sending a message that Virginia is big enough for the hopes and dreams of a diverse people. We stand here today to accept the license to lead, and we'll do so by including all and welcoming all, because the future of Virginia belongs to all. I come to this office ready to lead and serve starting on day one. We'll start where the future is determined in the classroom, preparing Virginia's children, preparing Virginia's children to be career and college ready, 
Starting today, we will raise standards. We will raise teacher pay. We will invest in facilities. We will invest in children with disabilities. We will create innovation lab and charter schools of achievement within the public school system. We will remove politics from the classroom and refocus on essential. Yes, we will remove politics from the classroom. And we will focus on essential math, and science, and reading. And we will teach all of our history the good and the bad. And we know that when our children don't go to school, it harms their learning and their development. So let me be clear, we must keep our children in school five days a week. <laughs> Starting today, we will tackle the high, the high cost of living. We will suspend for a year the recent tax increase on gasoline and eliminate the grocery tax altogether. We will double the standard deduction on income tax, rein in skyrocketing property tax, and provide the largest tax rebate in Virginia's history. And we will cut taxes on our military veterans' retirement benefits. <laughs> Solving the high cost of living in Virginia is not merely about restraining taxes. It's about growing incomes and opportunities as well. Starting today, we will be crystal clear. Virginia is open for business. We're going to re-energize the energy, the engine of the economy by reducing regulations, investing in job training, and make it easier for business to access capital and we are going to get all Virginians back to work. Together, together we will create 400,000 jobs and 10,000 new startups over the next four years, lifting up all Virginians. We're going to make Virginia competitive again no longer conceding corporate relocations and expansions to our friends in Maryland, North Carolina, and Tennessee. We will compete and we will win. The most basic compact government must make with every citizen is to preserve public safety. My pledge is that we will restore safety by fully funding law enforcement. <laughs> Starting today, we will comprehensively fund higher salaries, better training, and investments in, in equipment. And we will protect qualified immunity for law enforcement. Yeah.
and we will invest in community policing programs to build trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve and protect. Like so many, I'm troubled by the recent attacks on our police. The vast, vast, vast majority of these heroes perform an incredibly challenging and dangerous job with extraordinary professionalism. As governor, we will return respect to the men and women who wear the uniform and law enforcement officers, correction officers, and first responders who take an oath to keep us all safe. Somewhere along the way, We've lost the ability to show respect to one another, to disagree without being disagreeable. And we've tried to silence the people most responsible for the lives of our young children, their parents. Parents should have a say in what is taught in schools. They should have a say in what's being taught in schools because in Virginia, parents have a fundamental right to make decisions with regard to their child's upbringing, education, and care. To parents, I say we respect you and we will empower you in the education of your children. Our deep respect and gratitude remains for the heroes, the heroes who've fallen in the service of our nation, the veterans living among us today, and those currently serving on active duty. America is free because you were and are brave. And so I ask right now, Every hero serving in our military today, every veteran of the service in years past, every member of law enforcement who has worn the badge, every first responder, please stand up or raise your hand so we can recognize your service. If someone tells you there are no heroes anymore, tell them to come to Virginia. My fellow Virginians, we each have the power to make this Commonwealth a better place. No one alone, and certainly not a governor, can ensure the entire Commonwealth can live up to its promise. But one Virginian at a time, one act of service and sacrifice at a time, can make this Virginia we love stronger and better for all who live here. The great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday we celebrate today and whose great life we will celebrate on Monday with a national holiday, once said, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. For us, that boat is named Virginia. And today we set sail to a new and better day. Since the founding of Jamestown a little more than 400 years ago, we've been an imperfect people on a course to a more perfect union. At times, we've failed to live up to the ideals that we all hold dear. 
But we all want to do what's right. We all want to do what's morally just, even when we fall short. What is seared in our hearts by a loving and almighty creator is not a desire for power or conquest, not a love of self or personal advancement. Rather, it's a belief that life is worth living when we serve a greater cause than self. When we love without expecting favor in return, and when we set aside ego for the greater good, we are one Virginia. We are all sailing in the same boat. And with faith in a loving God, whose presence can be felt here today, and in partnership with Lieutenant Governor Sears and Attorney General Meares, and in partnership with our cabinet, and in partnership with the duly elected leaders of the Virginia Assembly, we will chart and sail a course through the present troubled waters so we reach the shores of a new and better day. A new and better day with more opportunity and prosperity. What we can do together is truly limitless. We must set our eyes on the common values and common future that unites us to work every day to strengthen the spirit of Virginia and redeem the promise of our people. My fellow Virginians, it's day one. Let's get to work. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the Commonwealth of Virginia.